Hey everyone, welcome to my garage. Isn't it beautiful? It's the quietest place in my house uh, when my kids are around. So, <clears throat> as you can see, my voice is not really up to snuff. So, um, we're going to do this week a little bit differently. As I'm recovering, I believe y'all are taking SATs or PSATs. And to fit the schedule of the rest of the TCC dual credit team that's doing English, all of next week, so week eight, which is October 11th through the 17th, is all going to be online. So obviously we're not gonna meet in class on Tuesday, and on Thursday, class will be online. So I'm gonna tell you everything that you need to know for the week, <clears throat> and that way you can be moving forward and be ready for when we finally see each other again on week nine, which feels like that is forever away, which will be October 18th, which is bananas. Okay, <clears throat> so if you start the module, just a very basic intro. So we're finally starting to read A Christmas Carol this week. I know it's not Christmassy yet, uh, but hopefully you enjoy it. It's a great, great story. I imagine that y'all are probably familiar with some version of the story, whether it's something you read as a kid or even as a young adult or the movie you've seen. My personal favorite is uh, A Muppet Christmas Carol. If you haven't seen that, I highly recommend it. I believe it's on Disney Plus. So what you're going to do is you're going to read the first two chapters of Christmas Carol this week, and then next week you'll read the final three chapters. I'm giving you a little bit of historical context here. So what you're going to do this week is you're going to investigate the historical and cultural context in which Charles Dickens was writing A Christmas Carol. I thought I heard a kid. Uh, so that's what we're investigating this week. So as you're reading, there's also a few videos that you'll watch. Um, read a couple of resources, <clears throat> and you'll be ready to rock and roll. So there's a Christmas Carol. It's going to be an EPUB file, which means that it's an ebook file. So essentially what you need to do is make sure that you have an application either on your phone or on your computer to read it. So if you're on your phone, you can download iBooks. If you have um, an iPhone, if you have an Android, you can download uh, something like, oh my gosh, I'm trying to remember what their uh, Nook. It's called Nook. You can download Nook. So either of those apps will work totally fine. Um, and the same apps work on computers as well. So make sure you have that. And most computers already have something like that installed, so it shouldn't be an issue. If you run into problems, please let me know. And let me know early so that way, you know, you're not emailing me at like Sunday at 4 p.m. saying, oh, I need to read this so I can get it all done. <clears throat> okay, this is a brief article from Lit Charts, and this is a great resource for you to explore for all the things that we're doing. We're encountering Christmas Carol. There's great things with chapter summaries and chapter analyses on that website, and I give you that link here as well for the summary and analysis. This is going to talk to you about the social dissatisfaction that's going on with people in Victorian London during the time of a Christmas Carol and something that's called the Poor Laws which is going to kind of open up into this. This is a kind of a shorter documentary. It's about 45 minutes long. It's about Victorian workhouses. And this is something that stems from the poor laws. So essentially what was going on in Victorian London, there were these laws that would isolate poor people in these big structures, big houses that kind of got established under the guise of helping people that were impoverished and poor by feeding them. And it kind of did do that, but also it was horrible, horrible working conditions uh, and people were really, really <clears throat> treated unfairly. And uh, ultimately, the reason why these things happen is because wealthier classes just didn't want to see or interact with impoverished people. So Charles Dickens at the time, which you're going to encounter in uh, watching a couple of these videos, he's very much an activist during this era and is so frustrated that people are treating impoverished people poorly, specifically impoverished children poorly, which is kind of the origin story of A Christmas Carol. So make sure you're paying attention to those things as you're reading. And then lastly, here's your assignment. <clears throat> it's pretty, pretty similar to other things that we've done. So after you read the first two chapters of A Christmas Carol, you watch the documentaries and the other short videos, I want you to give me a 300 word composition that does these things. Make sure you identify the elements of Victorian society that Dickens aimed to critique, namely the treatment of the poor, and do this for me with text evidence. So actually give me quotes from the story, and lit charts can help you out there too. 
uh, make sure you're analyzing how the text brings to light the problems with Victorian London. So don't just say something very general like, poor people were treated badly. Well, yes, but what quote are you using to demonstrate that from A Christmas Carol? And what's going on in Victorian London? What have you learned from the other resources that will shed light on this? So I remember I want you to demonstrate a clear understanding that you have actually read the text, that you're not just reading the lit chart summaries and just kind of regurgitating things that you're hearing. Show me that you're actually reading the text. Show me that you're actually thinking about it, that you've actually watched all the resources, that you're referencing the resources specifically, even quoting the resources. All of those things are really going to help demonstrate your effort and your understanding and boost your grade up. I also want you to imagine what societal ills you think Dickens would critique if he wrote a Christmas Carol in modern day America. So obviously we've got things like these workhouses and the poor laws in Victorian London, but since Dickens is such an activist and so concerned for the impoverished, particularly impoverished children, if you were writing this today, what types of things would he be critiquing in modern day America? So think about those things and just kind of imagine it. You don't have to rewrite it as a narrative like you did with um, a toy princess, uh, but just imagine what types of things would he be critiquing? And then lastly, as usual, you have to respond to a classmate with a hundred word response. Let me know what you think of their ideas. Okay, uh, same tips as usual. Go ahead and hop on lit charts if you need help with summary or analysis, if you're having trouble understanding things that are going on. Um, Dickens is pretty straightforward, but sometimes it can get, a, it feels a little bit antiquated. The language, some of the wording feels a little bit old and uh, out of date. So if you need help understanding what's going on, go there. As always, please make sure that you read and proofread your submission before you submit. Um, write it down in a Word document before you submit it. That way, if Canvas loses it, you've got it on hand. And remember, your primary objective is to show me that you understand the text, you understand the Victorian era, and you're demonstrating those things. Okay, so that's what's going on this week. And I just want to reiterate one final time is that you will, well, much bigger, you will not be coming to class in person next week due to funky scheduling with Boswell, funky scheduling with TCC dual credit, uh, things that we've all kind of agreed upon as an English team, uh, as well as this weird cold that keeps, I don't have COVID, which is good. Um, a few of you really nice sent me emails and just hope I got better. I'm not, I'm so bad at everyone that did. I don't care. Um, just, it was very gracious of a few of you. So um, I'm doing okay. Recover from this funky cold. Still got a fever. So I don't want to get around. Lots of y'all get you sick. So I hope everyone has a great week. Um, Please make sure that your classmates know not to show up to class on Tuesday or Thursday, and feel free to get in touch with me if you need any help. All right, that's everything for me. I hope you all have a great week, and I will see you not this upcoming Monday, which is the 11th, but on the Monday after that, or the Tuesday after that, which is I think the 20th. Wow, I won't see you for a long time. I miss you guys, my quiet, quiet class. <laughs>